Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Crimson Dawn Lore, where I, the author, teach you, the viewer, about the world of Crimson Dawn. Today's episode is kind of different, as we're going to talk about the main sidearm of my namesake character, Rick Lithyaskov, and why he uses that pistol. If you didn't see the thumbnail or the title yet, let's just say he has a bit of an appreciation for firearms of the Great Patriotic War, as he himself is kind of a history nerd like me. I guess in that way, art imitates life. Anyway, let's get into the lore for this special pistol. Interestingly enough, the personal sidearm of the first premier of the new Soviet Union, Rick Letyeskov, was a heavily modified and modernized Tokarev TT-33 pistol. Though he first used an MP443 Gratch as his sidearm in the beginning years of the Second Russian Civil War, Letyeskov later used his custom-made TT-33 in that war since he liked how much more powerful the pistol was compared to the MP443 and Makarov pistols. Given that the 7.62x25mm round is more powerful than 9x19 and 9x18. It was also due to Letyeskov losing his MP443 during the Second Russian Civil War while on a mission in the northern Ural Mountains. On March 9, 2020, Rick Letyeskov and Sergeant Katyusha Mayakova were scouting the northern mountain ranges of the Urals in full winter Spetsnaz gear. According to Soviet General Sergei Vasilov, there were rumors of a secret Russian Reich facility that was being used to build and unleash thousands of AI-controlled UAVs and UGVs onto the provisional Soviet republics, as to combat the Reich's dwindling army population after their humiliating loss in the Second Battle of Moscow two years prior. At first, the two operatives found an abandoned Soviet weapons factory from the Great Patriotic War, though as they investigated it further, Mayakova noticed a strange whirring sound below them. It turned out that the Reich built their secretive drone factory directly below the old weapons factory. But just before they could infiltrate it, a Reich soldier on his own scouting mission saw them and attempted to arrest them both. Matyaskov pulled out his MP443 to try and subdue the Reich soldier, though he caught on and shot the pistol out of his hands and demanded their surrender. As the two ran for cover, Letyeskov and Mayakova then realized both of their main weapons, his suppressed AK-12 and her suppressed SVD-12, were on the other side of the entrance of the factory. So Letyeskov frantically tried to find another weapon. To his luck, he found an old TT-33 pistol in the sealed crate that he and Mayakova were taking cover behind. He pulled back the slide and fired the weapon, and miraculously, the gun unleashed a 7.62x25mm round directly into the Reich soldier's head, though Letyeskov was only able to fire it once before the slide jammed, since it was very old. Surprisingly, the weapon was still in very good condition, all things considered, so he then chose to holster the weapon and take it as his personal sidearm to be properly cleaned, as he was thankful it just saved their lives. Vladyaskov and Mayakova then snuck into the underground churn factory with the recovered suppressed rifles, and as such, they were able to plant explosives in critical areas around the facility. Next, they silently killed Reich troops as they made their exit, and when they were far enough away from the facility, Mayakova hit the detonator and the both of them watched as the churn factory was destroyed. Vladyaskov then depressingly commented about the tragic loss of old Soviet weaponry. Mayakova did like that nerdy side of him, though. Anyway, since MP443s were somewhat of a rare sight during the Second Civil War, Adyeskov decided to keep the TT-33 as his own personal sidearm. First, he properly cleaned the weapon, and then he made sure he was able to use it in combat by frequently visiting the firing range to further test the weapon's reliability. Adyeskov further personalized the weapon after the founding of the new Soviet Union by first adding a safety switch on both sides of the pistol. He then truly made the weapon his own by adding the Premier's emblem on the grip as a final personal touch. Even after the unveiling of the PKK service pistol, Matyaskov still prefers his customized TT-33 since he thinks of it as a sort of a lucky charm that quite literally saved his life back during the Civil War. It would continue to be his sidearm for the rest of his life, and after he passed away in the year 2090, it stayed on display in his dacha which would later become a museum dedicated to his accomplishments as the founder of the new Soviet Union. And that concludes today's episode of Crimson Dawn Lore. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week.